everyone. Welcome back, take two. <laughs> but you didn't see take one, so don't worry about that. So it's, it's welcome back. It's Frag Chat with Smelly and Smurfy. And lots to talk about today, so uh, I'm not going to run through it. It's in the title. So let's get straight into the first thing that we're going to talk about. So we're excited to talk about perfumes from Fort 160 Tuesdays. Yes. The house of Sarah McCartney, who I did work, meet at the awards ceremony, um, Art and Olfaction Awards 2018 last week. If you want to see the vlog, the link's in the description, but we're not going to dwell on that. on that too much. So we're straight into, got some samples, and you are really excited about this yes. one, aren't you, Claire? This was the one I was most excited about. So Sarah kindly gave these to Dan to pass on to me. This is White Queen, and I'm wearing it today. I wore it today, uh, then I had a shower, and I... Um, it was still strong on my wrist, so it's I'm got wearing great longevity. Again, so basically, longevity is amazing. Yeah, uh, it's, is it Eau de Parfum? It's Eau de Parfum, and it's a collaboration with Safle Bon, and it's called White. I've heard Green. of them. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's kind of gourmandish. There's some Poppinex, which is a sweet myrrh. Right. There's some woods and jasmine, and it's kind of like a marshmallowy, cloud-like note in there. Ah, a bit coconutty. I've, well, coconut. We both got a bit mm. of coconut. And you reckon some booziness? Yeah, it feels to me like there's a liqueur or something in there. So, very, very nice. I like it. I'm definitely going to be reviewing that one on my channel. Right. And you like it too. I really like it. And I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of converted by you because mm. you, you've always been a big fan of that house. And um, one of their big uh, hits is uh, Sexiest Scent on the Planet yeah. Ever. So, what was the next one that you wanted to highlight? Um, let's highlight... Truth, Beauty, Freedom, Love. So I got um, interested in this because Lola from Lola's Sense uh -huh. absolutely loved it. She went over you know, to London oh, right. and went to Sarah's studio mm -hmm. and was raving about it. She managed to convince Sarah to sell her a bottle even though they weren't officially on sale. Um, right. I don't recall all the notes at the moment. It's a good name. Yeah. I can never quite remember oh, what wow. order to put the words in. <laughs> yeah. Truth, <laughs> beauty, freedom, love. I believe there's violet. Right. It's definitely apricot because that was the note I was most worried about. I wasn't sure if I was going to like apricot in there. Yeah. I'm like that about apricot. Yeah. I have trouble with apricot, peach, plum. I don't know why. Me too. Mm, I like weird, oranges, not peaches. Mm. That's not a euphemism. <laughs> 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 It's probably a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, anyway, sure there how does we're, that smell? Yeah. It does smell kind of like a, a little bit like marmalade but with a lighter, I think it might be the violet giving it a lift. Oh, I get that violet. And there's hay in there, I recall. Ah. Is it, the notes are amazing. The, the notes they sound absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I think I need to explore this one a little bit more because I'm not sure. Lovely if, little writing on the label there. These, um... oh, actually, while you're, just give us a bit more information and I'll just show you how their bottles look because they're very nice Oh bottles. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's hay, tobacco, apricot, I think maybe musk. That's the kind of design you get with their bottles, very art yeah, deco. Yeah, I think one of them's older than the other, so you've got different uh, heads, but. All good though, it very nice. It was good, like that kind designs, of, um, yeah. what would you call it? Art Deco, stroke, Art Deco, stroke yeah. 60s, I think. Yeah, Hybrid. I need to try this on skin, I think, and see see how it goes. I like that so far. I definitely enjoy the violet in oh, there. Oh, that's very nice. It, I get, you see, now that you've put that image in my mind of marmalade or jam, <laughs> it smells like that, but in a good way for a perfume. It might not yeah. sound like a good idea, but it is. It's really nice. It's got a good thing. It's got a good lift to it. It's, it's a bit fresh. They seem to have a speciality of doing a sort of gourmandy vanilla thing, but yeah. with a light freshness, so yes. they're not heavy. And it, they still smell like perfumes. They don't smell like yeah. a dessert. Just no. a dessert or, or sweets. They've got very wearable depth. gourmands. Yeah. Not that that's all they do, but I've, I've noticed a few of mm. them are that way. So the next one is Scent Fusium. Scent Fusium. Ah, sorry. Scent Fusium. Right, which is, you know, somebody it's, should start, I'm, I'm sure name. somebody's starting a yeah, YouTube should, channel yeah. called that in the next couple of weeks, but uh, that, that's the name of this fragrance. So I've never, well, I have not sprayed this one at all yet. Have we even yeah, tried no, it Yeah, we tried it yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many vodkas had I had? Okay. This is the one that's got gin, I think a gin oh. tonic kind of note. Oh God, now I remember it, yeah. yeah. 
okay, very green stroke white fresh yeah. kind of smell. But I remember this one developed quite right. a lot on paper when we tried it at two o'clock this morning. <laughs> I got him from Fuerteventura. Claire had been on holiday, yeah. which is why, unfortunately, she couldn't attend the awards ceremony with mm. me, which was a real bummer. But you had a, a nice holiday in Fuerteventura, yeah. which is a Canarian island of Spain, off really off the north coast of Africa, yeah. so very, very hot, if you're lucky. But Hence, you... my face is bright red at the moment. Yeah, but you normally get a really good tan, but mm. on this occasion, you, you maybe have just caught a little bit too much. The sun cream wasn't enough uh, for on my last, last day, day, really. But so. that will probably turn into a lovely shade of brown tomorrow. Hopefully. Um, anyway, so, so Dan came to look after Sweetie for a little bit uh, yeah. before I got home and then when I got in we started at 2am, we started sniffing. <laughs> we know how to have a good time, don't we? <laughs> and so what did we think about this one? Oh, it's going, it smells a bit chocolatey to me now. It smells a little bit like a chocolate violet but fresher. Okay. A violet chocolate or is it chocolate violet? You know, like a violet cream yeah. covered in a chocolate. Is it? Which is not, I don't think is, is what it's supposed to smell like. It's just what I'm getting. I'm not sure that that's my favourite mm. of the bunch. It's interesting, but that's not my favourite. Yeah. It definitely, it needs wearing on skin and, and checking yep. out. But let's, uh, yeah, we'll come back to that one. So, yeah. scent, no, that was scent enthusiasm. This is Freeway. And <laughs> I think there is a Sarah... McCartney video on that one. Uh, so Sarah's done a freeway on video. <laughs> if you have the right uh, <laughs> link, you can see that, which I'll put in the description below. Uh, no, it's nothing as bad as it sounds. It's yeah, a it's freeway. It's freeway. a freeway. They have done a clever play, play on words. And um, it, did you say that it has notes, something to do with the smell of burnt rubber and yeah, or tarmac or like, something? Yeah, it's like a bit of asphalt. Is that how you say it? Yep. Asphalt. The asphalt jungle. A um, bit of kind of rubber. Oh, no, that's really nice. It's like... Um, Freeway. You imagine that the motorway got... Um, all cars suddenly were gone and you mm -hmm. can't drive anymore. And instead the motorway becomes a garden. Mm -hmm. Something like that. But I think it's in California. And this was a collaboration right. with... Dan will insert the word there. Yep. <laughs> Not that I know the word now, but you're gonna after we've done the video, you're gonna tell me what the word is, and I will. I'll insert oh, it's it. with, another um, company. Uh, a shop in America that sells fragrances. Oh. Um, it's either okay. Indie Sense or right. It's one of the big ones. What's the other one? Uh, it's not Scent Bar. It might be Indie. Fragrance Sex. What? No. <laughs> I don't know. No, it, it's an indie. Sorry, it's, uh, I know, I know. It's a Les Santeurs, um, okay. but in the States. I'll put the name in uh, the under there. No, I'm getting a it's, lot of neuro from nice. that right now. Oh, yeah. It's very oh, fresh. Sweetie wants to come in. Very fresh, neroli, yeah. Nice. Bit... Neroli or orange blossom, I'm never quite sure. Might be both. Enter. Come on, sweetie. The dragon. So, sweetie's got this thing at the moment, only today. Dan bought this back from the... <laughs> Do you want to sit on that, sweetie? Dan bought this magazine back from the awards Well, ceremony. no, sent, he sent oh, okay. it to me, yeah. All right. Andy Tao. So Andy Tao has sent you this. Yes. And we've had it on the sofa. Yes. And sweetie keeps getting on it and sleeping on it. Now, I should just interject here and mention that we have actually got a sample of Le Oud, the latest release from Andy Tower, and um, we are going to be reviewing that and mentioning it in the next episode of Frag Chat. We just got it, and uh, we decided to give it a little bit more time before we mentioned it properly in a video. So, uh, full details of our opinions on that one coming up in the next episode. I can tell you the notes in it include Laotian Oud, Cypriol, Castorium, Java Vetiver, Mysore Sandalwood, Morel, Cistus, and Musk. And uh, it's the first Oud fragrance from Andy Tao, so a pretty exciting release. More details coming soon. <laughs> she thought that it was just a very useful oh, it's a place to sit. But being very contrary, is she? <laughs> she's not going to sit on it now. <laughs> so, yeah, that was... I uh, will insert the clip from earlier, actually, yeah. that we took of, of Sweetie sitting on 
the magazine, I'm going to say. Yeah. Well, Andy's face. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. That wouldn't be right. But no. um, yeah, she did sit on the magazine earlier. So, so that anyway, one, Freeway, freeway quite into, fresh. Um, Neroli. It, it needs to go on skin it, it's got and a bit to of see that, how it develops. Has it got a bit of that iso e super e vanilla e sexy Maybe, set on the planet thing yeah, in it? I'm not sure. I kind of like that. I think my favourite was White Queen. Yeah, that's my favourite at the moment. So we'll see. Anyway, we need to move on because we're, okay. running, we're running behind. No, we're not. There's no. We're, they're not going anywhere. They've got nothing better to do, don't worry. <laughs> you're not. You know, you're not in a rush, are you guys? So let's move on. Okay. Next on the list, we're gonna. Oh, this is quite exciting as well. It's a Zoologist perfume. So I was, I was very excited to meet uh, Victor Wong from Zoologist Perfumes at the Do last week. So that was a real thrill for me. But more importantly for you, we've I got said, these two. Did you give him a squeeze from me? Did you give him a squeeze? I did say that Claire said to give you, you a big squeeze. And did you though? And then I said, I'm English, I'm just going to shake your hand. <laughs> so I think I passed on the sentiment yeah, yeah, without right. actually doing something weird. All right. Yeah. Weird? Well, I, you know, I look up to him as an as important in, give... figure in the perfume industry. <laughs> I didn't feel comfortable squeezing him <laughs> <laughs> on my first, you know, yeah, way yeah. of saying hello to him. All right. Next time, you can squeeze him yourself. She's on the magazine now. Ah, this is, you see? She loves it, look at her. <laughs> that is a thumb, a vote of approval. She, maybe she's got piles or something, she's trying to cool them down. Maybe, but I don't think an, a high-end kind of niche magazine about fragrances deserves that treatment. No. But to she's... her, it's just a cool place to rest. <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, we hope that Victor will see fit to make a, a perfume based on a exotic, sh grumpy, exotic, short-haired cat yes. soon. Oh, my God. In the meantime, though, we have some really good ones, don't we? I just want Victor to have a look at her That'll be it. Yeah, come on. that The lady who does your cartoons, Victor, could easily... Victor, <laughs> have a look at this face and tell me she wouldn't make an amazing <laughs> character for one of your fragrances. What, yeah. what would she smell like, Pussy. Though? You could just call it pussy. <laughs> would get um yeah it'd be popular okay but what ones have we got hyrax yes or moth Mo let's do moth let's first do moth to start a stop yes, one <laughs> easy <laughs> relatively <laughs> okay moth from uh, zoologist perfumes this one is by the gentleman who did nightingale one of Tomu, the real Tomu, Tomu, yes Tomu. it's uh tomu inaba uh so he was the perfumer for uh, zoologist nightingale uh so why don't you have a little sniff of moth? Mm -hmm. And I'll just give a, a brief thing that it is, some of the notes include black pepper, cinnamon, clove, lemon, nutmeg, jasmine, heliotrope, mimosa. We've got ambergris, honey, definitely honey, guyac, musk, smoke, vetiver, amongst others. I absolutely get the honey. It's really yeah. syrupy. Very sweet. So you get honey, almost like a, a sugar syrup. Really, and some God, that was spray, sprayed a few minutes ago as well, wasn't it? So and still we did, very um, strong. We did one tiny little spray because the fragrance is yeah. so concentrated. Ex I think these are extremely strong uh, concentration extract of parfum. There is a slightly animalic note, as there often is with um, zoologists. Yeah, they are challenging, but this is one is of the what more. Was it, you said car was it castoreum? Uh, uh, it's. You've, well, you've got well, yeah, Naga Motha, which can be um, a little bit. It's got musk, and I th think those. That's the only obvious. Is it oud? Oud, ah, uh, oud is listed as well. So it's just this aspect of an animalic. Yeah. It, something like reminiscent of what you get from Curos. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Almost slightly Uranus, if. It's pungent and mm. yeah, definitely. But sweet, it, uh, yeah. which balances it out, so it's not un, it's not unpleasant or it's hard very to sweet, understand. Yeah. It's yeah. just if you can handle the likes of Kuros, then you have no issue with this at all. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It not doesn't that smell it's much like, like Kuros. Just... Although, funny enough, Kuros does have a honey or cinnamon. Yeah. I think a honey note, even or that that kind. There is a sweetness in Kuros. The reason why I'm thinking Kuros. Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't. It, Let's not say that this no, smells no, much I'm, like no, Kuros. No, I'm but... just saying if the animalic aspects of Kuros yeah. are coming to mind when I'm smelling that. But you've got a lot, the, the honey and the syrupy sweetness of it is really yeah. nice. 
I would describe it as a very rich kind of floral honey mm. with some exotic infusion in it. Mm. But it's very, it's very nice, but quite, yeah, very, kind of beyond even being saying unisex or... I think if you like the likes of Back to Black Bye Bye Killian. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. If you like Dirty Honey from 460 oh. Tuesdays, then this is worth a go. Florence Honey it's... Oud. Yeah. Yep. I yeah, think it's good, nice. that's actually a very good comparison, yeah. I really like that. Mm. But it's it's very pungent and um, it will announce your arrival in the room. You get probably. to go and buy beers from the local corner shop. Yeah, I ran, <laughs> went around the corner. <laughs> oh, drink of the night, yeah, Tiske uh, Lager. And um, yeah, I had to go to the local corner shop s smelling of four or five sprays of Zoologist Moth. <laughs> so that was nice. And you're on the vodkas and coke again, yeah? Yeah, the usual. But it's nice that you don't have to drink. Cheap, jerk-off vodka. <laughs> so in Spain, if you go on an all-inclusive, the inclusive free vodka is called... Jerk-off. Jerk-off. Yeah. I'll so put I, a picture on the screen. I, I didn't think... spot it for the yeah. first few days. And then they were pouring me my vodka and I looked at the bottle. and Because my, without my glasses, I can't see brilliantly. <laughs> But I thought that Lucky, looks like jerk good. off. <laughs> Actually, looks like it says jerk off on the bottle. And I got them to bring the bottle mm. closer to my eyes, and it's jerk off vodka. Jerk off. Right. So all week I've been drinking jerk off. <laughs> it's nice to be back to. <laughs> and you get that, that. You think that might have given you slight reactions? Uh, yeah, you, I was you felt like, allergic. I was allergic to it because every single night. I, my face was brighter red than this, it, even though I wasn't actually burnt. My face was bright red and I couldn't breathe. It was a bit like having um, hay fever. Couldn't right. properly breathe through my nose. Sug it suggests an allergic reaction. Yeah, yeah. so slightly allergic to I, the jerk. I don't think vodka. Spain are renounced for, uh, renowned for their vodka, vodka quality. Vodka making, no. no. Lesson learned. Okay, <laughs> so that's high rack. No, that's moth. That's moth. Now, how could they go even weirder than that? Of course they could easily because it's Hyrax. So the Hyrax is a cat that I think we find in South Africa. Sometimes known as a Dassey. Ah, and um, been researching this, yeah. I actually went to South Africa many years ago, Cape Town, and we climbed up, what's that mountain? Table Mountain. Uh -huh. Climbed up Table Mountain and my friend said, oh, you must look out for Dasseys. And she explained Dasseys, they look a little bit like beavers. Right. Like they're kind of um, small like, looking. Like that. Do they have hats normally? In no, oh. none of the ones I saw had oh. hats. Um, they're like large guinea pigs, really. <laughs> and um, what's wrong with that? No, I don't, why would you make a fragrance based around <laughs> that? But yeah, go on. But yeah, so they live in the rocks and stuff in the in the mountains. Um, but my friend never explained to me about their poo. Right, which is in perfumery terms known as Africa stone or right. hyraceum. So the poop that these cats excrete is it's a precious it needs to be yes yeah, it needs to be aged for a long time right. i think um just naturally out in the environment gets aged yeah and then is used in medicinal and perfumery right. uh, a bit like civet from yeah, the yeah. civet cat's backside or musk from the musk deer but this kind is of extracted thing. humanely so right. there is no 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 one hurts a dassy so in in this case, because they've already pooped it out, it's yeah, like yeah. ambergris. You're not doing any harm. So that ethically, it's fine to use this excretion um, because the, they've you know the Hyrax cat has finished with it. <laughs> it doesn't need it anymore. He's happy for you to have it. So uh, it's a quite an animalic note. Mm. And Hyrax. I not, have to admit, yeah. uh, for purposes of mm. disclosure, yeah, I've experienced Africa stone in a few fragrances before, mm -hmm. and hate it. You weren't, your hype, hopes weren't it's high, were they? I, I would put it no. right up, it was my, one of my, li, it probably is my least favourite note. <laughs> so, no offence. Is it anyone's favourite? <laughs> no offence to the perfumer. Some people <laughs> love, so I've tried Papillons, uh, yeah. Salome, uh, uh, Bogues, May, yeah. and now this, all containing Africa Stone. Right. And I am very, I find it very distinctive and definitely not my thing. So, no offence to the perfumer, well, but it, it, it's, just it's hard to deal with yeah the perfume of course is Sven Pritzkele who has made one of your favorite yeah. perfumes at the moment called yeah. powder and dust from mm. SP parfums I'll it's put the actually link. my number one fragrance at the really 100% right. I love it more than everything else so we'll put the link to that video that you did on that one mm. in the videos in, in the description but Hyrax uh, what 
Shall we begin to Shall describe it? it? Shall we attempt to? What do you want, the, the more recent one or the... Shall we do the... So this is one that we sprayed, what, 20 Ten, minutes yeah, ago? Yeah, 20 minutes ago. I recognise Sven's signature in here, right? Because he um, he uses something called nard in uh, some of his fragrances, and I can smell that in there. Uh -huh. But I also smell the African stone. It's got African stone, hyacinth, styrax, whiskey, Turkish rose, elemi, pink pepper, saffron, amber, benzoin, musks, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka. I think my problem is when there's a note that I really dislike, I can't really right. smell anything else. Okay. It's quite. Um, I think if you smell perfumes with a lot of civet in them or mm. that kind of thing, then it's it's not a million miles off. Very musky or civet perfumes, like maybe Amage, Goldman. I, I smelled that the other week. It is very um, you can smell this kind of thing in it, and it's got a real <laughs> depth and pungency it's to it. But it's pungent. it's a little bit challenging, and I wouldn't smell that. It, I wouldn't say that it just smells like a poopy nappy. But I did say that. And I, I like this, I actually find this fragrance very pleasant, but I did say there's an element of it is if, if you ever experience where you're picking, <laughs> you've got some underpants on the floor and you're not sure if they're just on the floor and they're fresh ones that you've washed, that just fell out of the, the, the freshly washed batch, or that they're ones that you've worn three times without washing them and then you smell them and you go, now <laughs> they're dirty. <laughs> there's an element of that smell yes. in it. Just, just an undertone of that, but, but not, in, in, not in a disgusting way. It's, in my it's opinion, to me. I think you more than you wore them more than three times. I think you might have worn them. <laughs> I three, don't think that's fair. I three think... weeks in a row. <laughs> and let's let's just be clear that we're both very big fans of Sven Pritzkley and zoologist and perfumes. hygiene and personal hygiene too. I actually <laughs> find this quite an interesting and animalic, gnarly kind of fragrance, but not outrageously so. However, it may find its way more into the annals of perfume fame as annals. no. <laughs> <laughs> it was pro a, you know, a Freudian, Freudian slip, slip. Uh, as more of a work of art than something that people are really going to want to rock and wear eight yeah. sprays of. But I think if you can, if you can rock Bogue Profumo's May and if you can rock Papillon's Salome, then you can totally rock this, but mm. I just can't. I'm finding it really interesting and I think it's worth a, a definite sniff for a real connoisseur of perfume. But a little funky and challenging. Mm, yeah. And quite strong. Very strong. Persistent. <laughs> Just like those <laughs> underpants. But that's really unfair because we, you know, we, we are not, you know, we are big fans of Sven Pritzker we love and Sven. Zoologist. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're quite conscious that that's a challenging fragrance. Well, yeah. They're, they don't they want put, to. they're not putting out crowd pleasers, are they? They're no. putting out artistic stuff. No. Now, speaking of people who are trying to put out crowd, crowd pleasers, yeah. Let's do a couple of uh, quickies here. Are we going to do a quickie on camera? I think so. But Why not? We're not together anymore. <laughs> Honestly, what, you know, most of the people who do things on camera are not either. Friends so with benefits. Exactly. It's, there's okay. no emotions involved. And All right. I'll be willing to <laughs> go along with that way of <laughs> operating any time, Claire. But um, moving back to the matter in hand, if you pardon the expression. I've got nothing in my hand apart from <laughs> Even though my face looks like oh, God. it's telling a different story. Moving swiftly on. So, so One Million Lucky. Now, this is the new release from Paco Rabanne. Uh, obviously a flanker of One Million. So it's if, if the gold bar and design of the original was not tacky enough, why not put it in a gold and silver bar and call it Lucky? Why not make the notes really, really huge inside the like sound? Like an eye test. Yes. <laughs> Bizarre notes listed are... Hazelnut craving. Yeah. Cedar that captivates. A prune shot that bites. That exhilarating. Like... <laughs> prune shot that bites sounds like something from zoologists. But anyway, this definitely is the opposite end of the olfactory spectrum. Ah, it's kind of, in a way, a relief <laughs> after the other one, but not quite so challenging. It could be... Um... It could be marketed towards women quite easily. It's very mm. sweet. Very yeah, I, I thought it was very sweet. Yeah, one million Fruity. lucky. Yeah. I, I get like a peachy note. Mhm. Mm this could be a feminine release without okay. a shadow of doubt. Are we sure this isn't the feminine one? No, that the gold, but it's definitely the men's one. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. 
that I, I genuinely okay. think that that could be marketing mm. towards women. It's yeah, a kind of sweet. Um... Oh, sweetie. Are you going to Yeah, it's, it's, it's not an unpleasant smell. No. It's, it, it's, um, it's sweet. Vanillic, maybe. Yes, yeah, sweet vanillic. There's some kind of freshness, like a citrusy yeah, apple freshness on top. A bit like one million. I mean, it's not a million miles away. From, if you'll pardon the expression. It's not a, that far off from the original one million, but... Um, <laughs> God, it's hard to really know what to say about it. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit bland, isn't it? It's, it's okay. It's just sweet, a little bit fresh, it smells very, it is, unfortunately, going to use that word, yes. generic. It muddles in with other things like Paco Rabanne Pure Excess that was yeah, released last yeah. year, and numerous other sort of slightly sweet recent releases that are out there. Slightly different to One Million in that it's less, it's not quite as bubblegummy, but it's sort of kind Sweet, of vanilla um, it's got a little bit of Le esque kind of like Artemisia yeah. or something like that. Kind of a bit of Lynx body spray-esque. 17 year old boy yeah. will wear this and meet someone at the disco Yeah. and she will say, oh you smell really gorgeous, do you want me to slap your friend the corner? <sighs> that never happened to me. Actually, <laughs> that's probably because I wore my dad's yeah, old you, bottle of Jim <laughs> Rodgers. That's, yeah, that's where you went wrong. That's where I went wrong when yeah, I was 15. Yeah, yeah. Even even in 1993, <laughs> my dad's bottle of Givenchy Gentleman was dated, even then. Mm. So that's where I went wrong. Anyway, but anyway it's okay, uh, but it's, it's rather boring to us and bland and sweet and uh, you can do a lot better. So we're not excited by that new release. Maybe we might be by Cinotto di Liguria from Acqua di Parma though. So let's have a look at that one. So uh, this is the new one from the Blue Mediterranean line where they tend to focus on a particular note in the title at least and a region of Italy, presumably, I don't actually know, but Liguria must be part of Italy. And the Cinotto is a citrus-esque fruit, a sort of bitter sweet fruit apparently. I've never tasted it. I think there's a famous drink made, out, made from it okay. by San Pellegrino. Oh. That I've never actually tasted, so uh, yeah, read out go for notes? it. So, a bright and lively scent, fresh notes of chinotto and mandarin blend together with vibrant aromas of rosemary and cardamom, followed by soft accents of jasmine, sandback, and musk. Okay. Got a thing. Uh, yep. Let's put it on there. Plenty on there, that's good. Oh! Great opening. We love the opening. Yeah, so we the tried opening this is. Today. Yeah, we went down to the uh, Blue Water shopping centre. It was John Lewis. Unfortunately, our friend Tony, hello if you're watching, wasn't there. Hi, Tony, where were you? We missed you. Yeah, he's allowed a day off. Um, but we hope we'll see him next time. Mm. Lovely, uh, the man in the actor department place there. He's a really, really nice guy. So, in the opening, Beautiful. I get a real zesty citrus, a slightly masculine background of maybe something a bit aquatic. Mm hmm. But what we noticed, because you tried it on skin, mm -hmm. is it dried down to a, a floral musk yeah. that was kind of feminine. A little bit leaning that way, Almost yeah. a bit nondescript. Yeah. The citrus fucked off and, and didn't come back. And I wasn't got, quite how I was going to put it, but... Not, not, maybe not as <laughs> succinct as, as you <laughs> no, were. I think you've, you've captured it well, yeah. All right. So, yep. yeah. No, you're right. The citrus left the building. Yep. In the same way Elvis did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hopefully not in the same <laughs> manner, but anyway, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we got left with, <laughs> or you got left with, what I described as a floral musk. Yes. Powdery floral musk. And having looked on Fragrantica, it seems to be described as a floral sheepra, mm. whatever that means. It'd be good. We noticed that there isn't really a, a major woody note in the base that you no. always get. So you've got jasmine, sandback and musk. I think patchouli was listed on the website too, but there, there isn't cedar or sandalwood that you normally yeah. might expect. So it's it's a little bit light and thin it's overall. It's kind of like an aquatic it, citrus that dries down into a, a floral, yeah, a jasmine powder, which powdery jasmine. It does have a little powdery. Element very light too. jasmine, not yeah. like a, a heavy, like in a, a feminine fragrance, like yeah. alien, nothing like that. Just a very light jasmine with powder. And if 
this Shinotto note maybe has a sort of unique characteristic. Maybe that's the sort of unique thing. And it is a very nice, delicate, it's a very delicate, nice, mm. pleasant citrusy scent, as are many of the Med Blue Mediterranean line. But would you buy it? For me, it doesn't stand out uh, when I think against uh, of it against things like Fico de Malfi, which I really like, or uh, Ginepro de Sardinia. I, I would say there are other... Mandolo myself. Uh, Mandolo is a gourmand from that line. Yeah. But to me, there, yeah, there are three or four that are really good. And then some of the others, for me, Arancia de Capri and even Cedro de Taumino that a lot of people like. Mm. Meld, uh, Bergamotto de Calabria. They're light, they're fresh. It's very delicate, it's beautiful, but it, it's a bit colonial. It lasts a very yeah. short time and skin scent and it's a bit soft. Even Pura, bit, which we've yeah. both kind of said is, is not that great once you get past the opening. You, you've said well, you tried pure on today mm -hmm. against it on the other wrist even pure did seem quite potent next pure to this one seemed better to be honest yeah yeah so lovely delicate smell but perhaps a little bit light and ultimately not that incredible not compared that to their other uh, mm. many of their others i really love and they are apparently releasing cipresso di toscana mm. uh, bertrand de chiffre one from 2005 okay. really soon so really excited for that not saying that one's rubbish or anything but it's quite light to us on first impression yes yeah, so we need to all. try it properly well, give of it course we try and give it more chance lovely delicate opening let's see yeah so that's actually all the fragrances we wanted to talk about yeah and now we're going to talk about uh, videos of the week. So there are two standouts for mm -hmm. us. One of them is fragrance related, one of them probably not. Yes. So first of all, we watched... So we watched Carlos yeah. and Stephen from Red Lessons. Yeah. And they talked about Alien Man, so the new alien fragrance for men, which I have to say I'm really excited to It's kind of a I, big deal, yeah. I really want to smell that yeah. one. Although there's no mention of any jasmine in it, which I find bizarre. Oh, right. I think. That's the main player in, in the yeah, original jasmine Alien. Yeah, jasmine is the big deal in Alien. Alien is the, no. the one in the purple bottle. Yeah, with a strange alien-like bottle. The yeah. knockout jasmine in your face. Right. Everyone wears it. Yeah. Can't miss it. Big hitter of the face. I mean, Very having, floral, yeah. musky. I don't even know... Yeah, how to describe it? It is very distinctive. Very the smell distinctive. of that one. Um, I might even have some over there. Uh, Angel then was the gourmand dish. Angel's one. a gourmand one, which and, I don't uh, like. Angel men also the gourmand for Amy men. Amy and I hate them. Right. The entire <laughs> line, that, I hate them. That, that's that line dealt with. All twenty, but uh, no, fair no, enough. No, I, 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 I nineteen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alien was a different thing, and yeah, quite critically regarded as a great one. So Alien Men, and they, well, we won't, we haven't smelled it, so watch their video. We enjoyed watching that one, yeah. and we're excited. Of course, many other people will be reviewing that when it comes out. Will it be as big of a deal as the original Alien? We don't know. Hope they don't just make it a boring, generic mm. release. It sounds, from what Carlos and Stephen were saying, it sounds like it might be borderline yeah. dull. I think in the nicest roundabout way, they kind of weren't blown away. By yeah, it, but they I'm, said there yeah. was a slightly weird note in there that could be hit or miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hit or moogler. Hit or... Could be hit or miss. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping it's, it's hit. I'd quite like. Yeah. I'd quite like that. Yeah. So we'll reserve judgment on that one. Mm -hmm. And the other one that was really good was uh, the. Well, it's by one of our both of our favourite reviewers. Uh, Larnier Smith, the great uh, channel where he reviews a lot of classic fragrances and modern ones, loves his history of the Hollywood era of 50s films and 60s films and all that kind of stuff. Always telling us about uh, when, the time he met Richard Burton and stuff. Uh, I don't know if he actually claims that he did. I don't think no, he did. Uh, he they met did, them yeah. On, I think he met them on the He's train. got a lot of brilliant yeah. anecdotes and a lovely knowledge of the history of. Uh, American, the glory area of, of Hollywood, mm. plus a fantastic knowledge of scent anyway. But what we didn't know is yes. that he is a top master chef. Yes, as we saw in his most recent, one of his most, hopefully if you're watching this, maybe still his most recent video, which I'll put the link to, uh, and he, a very occasional ser series called Something's Burning, uh, which, how would you, I, I described it like a strange nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in the best possible way. Um, they were cooking... A, it's like, a, it's like a cookery show. Yeah. You're watching a cookery show and they decided to to film the off, the morning after breakfast. Yeah. So they're doing a breakfast that you need to eat when you've got a hangover, basically. Yeah. But mostly it was about Manhattans. Yeah. 
Um, they were involved. There was a lot a of mate. drinking of, of cocktails. There a was lot of cocktail drinking. What, someone purporting to be a maid. A Spanish maid. Yeah. Speaking mostly Spanish. Yes. And a lot of linguistic misunderstanding between the three people in the video, mm -hmm. all of whom were wearing wigs, some of which were pink. <laughs> and we could, I think we'll just leave it there. Don't yeah, watch. Just, if you've been taking massive magic mushrooms or are on acid drip, don't watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because it could be very frightening. Public health warning. Yeah, but it was extremely entertaining and definitely watch it. And watch the old one, the, pre, the previous yes, one. Yes, well. if you find all the. If you search on his channel for Something's Burning, it's a great series. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think the cocktails are pretend cocktails no, or I, mocktails. I get the feeling. We get the feeling they're definitely quite strong. They're real and they're not the first ones they've had that no. evening. <laughs> or that uh, morning <laughs> yeah. brilliant program so yeah mm. thank you for that one guys um is that it troll of the week um there were a good one for me was that somebody said your bald spot is gross i think that's lame actually i think trolls need to step up their game otherwise S we're going to stop mentioning them somebody described me as the chav ben statham he's a film star who looks a jason bit like me statham. jason statham yeah okay I'll do that again, I'll cut that. All right. Someone described me as a Chav Jason Statham. I don't think you look at anything like Jason Statham. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it was intended as a compliment in the first place, and then I was the Chav version. So yeah, no, I think trolls need to step up their game. It's Otherwise, not great, yeah. we're going to cut their section. Yeah. Trolls are not really doing very well on no. either of our channels, so please step up your game. They have to be witty and inventive, they can be very rude too. Yeah, it doesn't matter how rude you are, but at yeah. least have imagination. Be Otherwise, clever. do you know what, you can fuck off. Yeah. The art of trolling seems to be in a, it's a It's slight... a dying game. Yeah. You know? Bring back, bring back the glory days. Yeah. Of Buster Nut. Where's, where's Buster Nut I think I actually, I actually him? blocked him one Did comment. Did he take it too far? It was just too much. Yeah. He was describing various sexual acts that I didn't think I needed to give a platform to on right. my channel all right. that's all thank you very much for watching 37 minutes 20 minutes went out the I, window i know we can cut some shit out of it can't we it was all quality <laughs> How, what could you cut from that it was perfect okay <laughs> thank you for watching bye everybody goodbye <laughs>